Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we are going to be painting this really creepy, fun scene of Cthulhu Rising for Halloween. Now, if you're not familiar with Cthulhu, Cthulhu is a monster from a American science fiction horror writer's work, Lovecraft. He's like kind of considered the father of that genre, and there are so many fans of this. I'm actually expecting some people to be really excited to see this um while we're here i'm going to have john adjust the color because i'm noticing the color on my canvas and the color on screen needs a little bit of a thingy thing you see what i'm saying um now uh i'm going to go over every color mix every technique everything that i've got going on i'm going to have the co-host honey hi so honey uh my eldest child is going to be here helping me co-host and pointing the cameras at what i'm talking about uh helping me answer community questions during the live if you're here during the live and you have a question put it all in caps now i don't answer every single question during the live but we have a lot of volunteer moderators and those are people who know and are familiar with the 2500 videos that we've released on painting and so they can help you find the video or even answer that question so there's a lot of people here to help you especially if you're new to painting um, maybe you're here and you're like, I don't even know who Cthulhu is. This is so weird for me. And I'm going to paint it. If you have a young person or person in your life who's D and D or reads science fiction and they know who Cthulhu is and you like drop them, off, drop this on them as a gift, it's going to create such a moment in your lives. You guys are just going to be blown away. Um, and again, uh, it's a, he's an author in a series of short stories that take place in kind of one universe, Miskatonic, and uh, these are apparently beings that existed before the universe was created, and they want to get in, and, and if you see them, you go mad. Um, I'm a big fan. I read all the series when I was younger, and so um, I thought you might enjoy sharing this with me today. Am I good to go? All right. So, excellent, 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 excellent. I am... Um, fairly pleased with this now i do have a traceable for this i'm going to show you how to draw cthulhu but i have a traceable so you don't have to know how to draw cthulhu and when in your life did you think you were going to say that i don't know how to draw cthulhu <laughs> though those of us who read the stories are like i'm kind of reluctant to draw cthulhu which is why we've done the 13 days of halloween this many years and you guys have never had a cthulhu is because i also read it and you know in the cthulhu universe you paint stuff it can be real so <laughs> you got to do so carefully <laughs> Yeah. I'm on an 8x8 surface today. It's a stretch canvas. It's the Art Alternatives Classic Cotton. I really like these canvases. I've got the colors Deoxazine Purple, Thalo Blue, Cad Red Medium. Now, this Lemon Yellow Hansa, or, uh, yeah, Lemon Yellow Hansa, is an optional color. It is just how I hit this one super vibrant eldritch green. And for those of if you guys play games and you know what eldritch magic is, then you know that that's a specific green. And you can't get a lich unless you got a good green. So the lemon yellow hand says my my way into a lich green. <laughs> for those of you that know what that is, cad yellow medium, thalo green, burnt sienna. This is the zinc white. Now I'm using Golden Artist Colors zinc white. Um, and this is the titanium white. Shall we throw up the first step, honey? Step. Step. Step, step. Uh, I, I'm beyond excited, says Miranda. My high school son is a massive fan and I wanted to paint him something for years and I finally found it. Thank you. You are going to love it. It is going to just. That's exactly what. This is, this is that's exactly what she wants. Yeah, it's totally what I want. Years ago, I did ah! a D Sorry, and you said boo. I said boo. Is that funny? <laughs> you scared me. I am putting out black paint. You threw up our step, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to put out black paint, and the first step is just paint the whole canvas black, which I think all of us can handle today. We got this, right? I'm going to get a big brush. I'm going to get slightly damp, and I'm going to just paint my whole surface black. That's not too bad. We can handle that. Now there is a short of this so you can watch the time lapse if you want to watch this and then watch that. Because sometimes when I'm designing, I will build things in a slightly different way than when I'm teaching. And that's because I'm realizing like areas that you guys might struggle where I, I it's like easier for me. And so like I might not do the same same process for you guys just to get you through. 
I feel a lot safer now. You do? Yeah. That it's all black? <laughs> it's, the boo's gone. The boo is gone. <laughs> so did, if you guys saw my bee, my very, very funny bee, I showed it to Honey. And Honey was like, it's scary. <laughs> in, in a minion <laughs> it's, way. In a minion way. And I was like, when did minions become scary? But apparently, minions are scary for some people. Yeah. And I did not know that. And I did not know they were even scary for my child. So you learn. The more you learn. Now I'm going to wash my brush out, rinse it out, take all the paint out, and dry it off and put it to the side. And then after I'm all done painting, I'm going to wash all my brushes in soap and water because that keeps them good longer. Now I'm going to dry this. To do the next part, I really, really need this to be dry. Um, so we're going to dry it thoroughly. Honey, we'll chat with you guys for a second and I'll yep. be back. All right. Um... Hello, hello. Thank you, everybody. Hi, Grace. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Bree. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being here. I'm really excited. I think it's fun that I get to host the, the Cthulhu because I'm quite excited to see this one painted. Dry, dry, dry. dry yeah. It is. It's just like it's just very. You had to. You had to really put up a big coat over that scary, scary image before. I was. I was so terrified. Thank you so much, Heather C. Really appreciate it. All right, you are back. We're back from outer space. <laughs> so right, do I pop up a step now? You can pop up a step now. We're going to kind of lay out some things. Now. Cthulhu is, because he is, uh, you know, an old one, um, you know, you can't over-tentacle him. <laughs> you really can't make him ugly enough. So really feel like you can just relax and lean into this. Like, the, the uglier he yeah. is, the better. I'm going to take an Art Alternatives T-square... And I'm going to come down and just maybe just a little bit less than my lower third because I really want most of this to be... I'd be careful talking about Cthulhu like that. Oh! Yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a chalk tool. So I'm using my T-square and this tool. This is a Taylor's chalk tool. I use this because it's designed to wash out a fabric if you're having to make adjustments when you're quilting or sewing. I've always had them and I realize they make a very safe sketching tool for painting, especially acrylic painting. Um, they just work really well with it and I like it and they, they erase with like a little bit of clean water so I like it a lot. Patty Hoffman has given us more coffee and I'm actually oh excited gosh, about it because I need some coffee right now. Patty! <laughs> need coffee! Now in here I'm going to come up to the top Maybe a little bit from the top. This is when you would use the traceable if you don't want to sketch along with me. I'm going to make a little, a little dot. Now I'm going to come over and make a bump. Oh, and maybe a slightly larger and misshapen bump coming off to the side. We got to start walking to Starbucks. We do, man. And a... The the thing is, is YouTube pays on a delay, so we have to wait until it comes in to walk to Starbucks. Oh, Oh, well, we, we but I'm ready, man. When it's there, I'm going to be, be getting it. All right, I'm going to bring a little bit of his little trunk forward. That's one tentacle. And then another little tentacle is going to come in and kind of join this. Patty's pretty awesome. Patty is super awesome, and I really, really need the coffee, so I'm very excited about it. <laughs> so a lot of this is going to vanish into um, into his face, uh, but for right now, it's just going to bring a little eyebrow arc up and into the brain area, a little more exaggerated. Again, can't really get it wrong. Careful. Careful that you can't get Cthulhu wrong? Careful what you say. 
<laughs> yeah, honey has no concerns. John would never say that because he would never give me the yips. Honey's like, I will absolutely give my mother the yips. <laughs> that would well, be I, very funny to me. I put you on the Tower of Terror. <laughs> you did put me on the Tower of Terror. I don't roller coaster well. So you kind of see it's a bump and it's such a weird shape, right? And then the eyes kind of come down here. He's looking pretty Cthulhu-y. He's looking pretty cthulhu I just want to know where, you know, head parts are or where um, it kind of looks like basic shape stuff is. Soup. And then we definitely, you know, he's got these sort of lines, like brain lines. So I'm going to draw those in just so I can remember they exist. <laughs> right? And then we will put a couple of his background tentacles in. Bring back our tentacle in. He's a little more complex of an object to draw in that he's got lots of parts. But he's also a very simple object to draw because, well, he's made up. You know so. those animal videos that are like, oh, smooth brain, no bumps, no curves, and Cthulhu is the opposite of that, has many bumps, has many curves. Yeah, that's why he's always up to some. <laughs> Just bringing that little tentacle down. And sometimes I like to sort of just paint them in, so I may brush more of them in from here. I like to really sort of refine this upward, upward space. It's kind of important to get the scowly mean look too. So if I have to really come down and go up, I will do that. I don't want to make them look uh, chibi. <laughs> you can, weirdly. You can do that with Cthulhu, but I, I prefer not to. You don't need that many lines. You can use all the lines that you have in the traceable. That's no problem. Um, but really, this is about all I need need of him to begin with. So you can throw up the next step. Just a bit. Yeah. I find with tentacles, I have an easier time doing my tentacles with a brush. Coming back and putting it in my atmosphere, it's a strategy for me. So I'm going to take a little bit of my thalo green, uh, my burnt sienna, and a little bit of titanium white. It's going to make a weird color. It's going to be one I can see, even against this dark background. Brush a little line down. So it will make it a little easier for me to get my tentacles in. Got to have a strategy, my friends. Burnt sienna, phthalo green, a little titanium white. Enough to see it. Just bring another little tentacle over towards the left. We got one, two, three tentacles that are painted in now. Now I'm just going to go tentacles on the right. Well, that was very tentacly, wasn't it? Whoa. S curves are very tentacly. A lot of them vanish behind buildings, so don't do the best tentacle of your life. Where you got to paint over it. <laughs> it's I've been there. Not going to make you very happy. Now I'm going to come up to the mid cheek. If you could call. That bone a cheek I guess. got that song from that reel you posted with the stuck in my head. Do you? Hey, yeah. Cthulhu. Yeah, no, that was really good. That was a good find. For those that, that get the joke, it's a very good find. I'm just keeping my brush on its toe and, you know, sneaking it around. This is a nice one to paint. It kind of comes more up here and it's going to come back. See, that's a very fun little curvy line, isn't it? 
So sometimes I have an easier time like painting in these structures than getting the atmosphere around them and then painting them back in. But there'll be enough of them in here kind of visually holding me that I don't have to worry. He's a, he's a filter feeder. <laughs> I like him. Eats a lot like a squid or a crab or whatever. I like him. He liquefies our brains and then eats them, I think. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're fine. I'm going to bring a nice big... Kind of go over here. Oh, I got a little wiggly. Now, uh, this painting, the first one, this one, I think we're going to be putting up for sale on the website. Ooh. So, if you have been looking for something. I know it's a weird one to have up there. There's some other not so cthulhu -y things, too. Like, regular things. Because I know that he isn't, this isn't for everybody. And I really believe that that's okay. We're all just trying to figure out how to get through life. And it's okay if uh, tentacle monsters are not your favorite. I'm not offended by that in any way. He's just getting his little tentacles on. His tentacles. You know, if you're going to conquer a whole plant place, you got to you got to have some ways to do it, right? These are his uh, defensive. Hmm. I guess this one decided to go hunting over off the left. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> go hunting to the left. I don't know which is scarier, the thing before the black or the thing after. <laughs> <laughs> so just try to brush them down. I want to have enough where he feels, you know, mostly threatening. We want to feel pretty threatened by him. I can also come here and just take this moment to paint that whole area in. I love boo jokes, if you can't tell. You know, I'm I'm gathering that. It's all I've always loved to see honey in these scenarios because it's it's a little different than, you know, just being at home and then, you know, there's this funny stuff like I love blue jokes. Boo jokes. <laughs> blue jokes. No <laughs> I literally I'm wearing my I'm wearing my spooky pants right now. I love I love Halloween. Cause my birthday is in Halloween. That is true. We're coming up on your birthday. Yeah. Is there a live that day? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but I, I totally that. could have done that. That's like, <laughs> that's a mess up I absolutely could have made. So reasonable I question. I just realized with like the whole, uh. I'm just still using the sepia, Raphael sepia number six brush. This is a round brush. Still just using a round brush to just paint this in. I wouldn't be upset. I wouldn't be upset. You can do your Halloween paintings. It's okay. No, they're over on the 14th. Yeah. And then I think the last one I scheduled was on the 21st. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Because we're, they're remediating the basement. We have rain on. Oh. Wait. What are they doing? Oh. They have to remediate the basement. Oh. <laughs> to make it safer to live here. Come in here and just paint this in. So it just gives him a little bit of green and we kind of know where things are at. I can fix a lot of these things later, but it does let me begin the painting. Oh my gosh. Hmm. He looks so Cthulhu. He's so Cthulhu already. He's so Cthulhu. So Cthulhu already. All right, let us dry everything. Okay. Dry it. Dry it. And I did drying, and it's a Cthulhu. Oh, 
Oh, my birthday is on the twenty second. So I love ho- I love I love October because it's like I get my birthday, and then I get Halloween. So it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Oh, I see. Patty says Butters is watching the sh- live. I love that. Butters is awesome. Very good dog. All right. What? Back on. I was just talking about how Butters is a good dog. Oh, yeah. I just said, what the? <laughs> just went. <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see better. Let's paint the eyes in for a little bit. Let's work on our little dude. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of my CAD red. I'm still on my number six uh, round sepia, and I'm going to get a little bit of my Doc's purple. I'm going to work them together. I don't think I've heard anyone ever refer to Cthulhu as little dude. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Let's work on our little dude. <laughs> Let's bring up a nice kind of like, ooh, that's a scary eye. Ooh. I see that you're painting right over the green. Yeah, if I like sometimes when you're painting things in, you'll you could paint over a line or you'll change something, and you've got to come back and correct it out, anyways. And you got to give them like pretty stern looking features. He needs him some stern looking features for sure, for sure. He's looking pretty good. I'm going to take this and put this to the side. We'll let that have a rest. And I'm going to grab a bright. This is a number 10 Simply Simmons bright. And I am going to work a little bit. I'm going to work some black and yellow. Which actually, believe it or not, makes a green. And I'm going to come here in the center. Take my water back and forth. Just make a nice line. We just want it to be level at this at this stage, and we're going to brush back and forth over the black. Kind of see it runs out. It might be a good idea to throw out gloss glazing liquid to improve transparency and the blend. You can always kind of come in there and get a little gloss glazing liquid in the brush and in the paint, and you can see that that definitely... But that's going to make it longer to dry, correct? Yeah, it'll be longer to dry, and it will take a longer time to dry, and it will blend better. Okay. Both because of the long time to dry, and also because it improves brushability. Now I'm coming with black from the left side, brushing it in, kind of shading it out. How much is too coming much Coming from gloss? the... Huh? How much is too much gloss glazing liquid? Okay, so for this, you can... It, the gloss glazing liquid will dry over time. Like a glop like this, it might take it a week, but it will get there. Um, so it slows down the drying time of the paint. It doesn't arrest it. And so therefore, you don't really have to worry about that as much. But with Retarder, if you use too much of that product, your paint will never dry. It, its whole process is to slow down the drying time. I'm just kind of blending that in. You see that gives it a nice little softy glow. And if I want to put any back. A polluted ocean. It's just Eldritch. It's okay. <laughs> oh, but like, yeah, from the Eldritch, not from the, <laughs> not from the people. <laughs> not to say that that's. <laughs> I see that I may have crust of crust of there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Doing fine. I brush horizontally because the horizontal nature of it's going to help it feel like water. It needs to be horizontal to feel like that. You want things to be as level as you can make them. Now that that's dry, I can put that little brush to the side and kind of pick up my round again. This is dry now, so I can take my red and yellow together and make an orange. orange. I'm going to make it kind of a red-orange at first. Start to paint in the glow on his eyes. A little redder, I think. I wiped off on the paper towel. That really give that eye life. That eye needs some life. Needs some life. And coming around here, and then as I come back and get into the the lighter. It's 
So we're just sort of shading it and working it out. Again, red and Doc's purple makes our dark color. I love using Cad Red and Dioxazine Purple. Going up over the eye with a shadow, kind of behind. Mary Mitchell says that her granddaughter Raylan is watching. Hi, Raylan. The pretty scary monster for painting. Unless you're 20 and then I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, maybe the same. It's always nice to be seen, right? <laughs> this is a pretty scary monster. I have a job. And I I have a 401k. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Raylan! <laughs> you go! So I'm going to continue on with some yellow into my orange, making an even brighter orange. And we'll just begin to kind of tap in and blend in that glowy area. It's just a starting space of it. It's not the last one, but it does glowy eyes. Start to glow the eyes, right? If it looks like he's staring into your soul, I think you're doing it right. Yeah, it's really. This is one of those good moments where a painting should stare yeah. into your soul. Now it's pretty good, and that can have a little moment there. It's having it's having a think see, and that's okay. Dry everything. Oh well, we found out she's five. <laughs> five is an awesome <laughs> age. Five year olds, Cthulhu never bothers five year olds. Yeah. <laughs> totally doesn't even just grown ups. All right, I'm in with their dryer. All right. Yeah. Cthulhu, Cthulhu only, um, only goes for people over 18. I don't know why. It's just a thing. I'm loving, I'm loving him so far. He's very ominous in the water. Very spooky. I like him quite a bit. Dry, dry, dry. Hello, everyone. Oop. Whee! Back on. And Back then we're going to step. Step, 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 step. And I'm going to get my number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender, which is the ultimate blending brush. The ultimate and I'm gonna, blending brush. I'm going to get a little glazy medium on it because, man, I, I, I come to bring it. And I'm going to get a little bit of my nice zinc white there. And let's get some blue. A smidge of purple and a little black we're just trying to create a kind of misty misty smoke it's got a, a little bit of a blue cast to it come here and very gently and lightly put this out as a smudge it it's okay that you go over the green and go over him because it's very transparent and you'll still be able to see where he is and that will still help you get that misting out we got to get some misting it's a misting misting Maybe come in the tentacle, because, you know, he's got a miasma. Is it miasma, honey? Miasma. Yeah, it comes off of him for sure. Miasma. A little blue, a little purple, a little black. Getting that fog in there. Yeah, he's just it's just some foggy foggies. Foggy foggies. Gotta get some foggy foggy. For the little guy. For the little guy. For the little guy. He needs some fox. <laughs> He's got some stuff. And he needs some fox. And, uh, you know, he goes by Carl to his friends. And, and he's just looking for his habitat back. Actually, it's a true story. Is that real? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's kind of sad. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Add a little more layer coming through here, kind of just enriching that 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 smoke, that mist, right? We got a little mist coming up there. Rinse that out. That's a pretty good mist. It now I'm going to take a little bit of my lemon yellow and a smidge of my phthalo green and a little zinc.
and start getting some like neon green eldritch miasma. Sometimes if I have a second blending brush, I will come in with a dry one and smooth over or blend or even get like a little bit of the glazing liquid. So it's okay to smidge, work, nudge, and encourage your mediums. Pretty ominous fog here. Yeah. I like that there's some glowy fogs and there's some regular fog. It's just my asthma for days, man. Yeah. Yeah. Got buildings here, but we know that down here, there's definitely going to be a little bit of a miasma. We can't go too far, and the reason is, is that we've got to paint the tentacles in and then push them back into this mist. So what I'm doing is I'm covering the tentacles enough to integrate the mist, but not so much as to vanish what I painted. Yeah. <laughs> you love the glow of that? It's just so weird. No, it looks really good. It's very glowy, and I didn't use any neon. That's really just thalo and lemon yellow. It just makes a glowy glow. That's cool. Got some white in there and glazing liquid. Yeah, glaze it up. But again, this is an application that works best when things are done with a light hand. So you're not, you shouldn't be going, swish, 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 swish. like you want to be, let me blend this before I demo it because it will dry in place. <laughs> yep. But I'll show you the difference in the strokes, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to not do. Because you really do want to give it the feeling of that first layer of a distant kind of smoky. Doom. Yeah. And we can even come back with black and stuff if we need to. So we've got lots and lots and lots of room. That's pretty good. So what I'm not suggesting i'll just do the the neon green color i'm not saying go like this see how that's a very just solid mass i'm saying go like this that's a big difference between those two techniques isn't it one is just a bloop and one is an irregular shape of things let me see if i can do this in red because that's super hard to see isn't it yeah we can see the technique but it's hard to see the paper yeah let's um I'll do this. So I don't want you to go like this. I want you to be more like this. See how that's much lighter and a more delicate, irregular little space? So we're not like that. That's just bad, bad form for us. It's gotta be even even if we're pressing in hard or connecting more, it's still gotta be lighter. Does that help everybody with that little foggy technique? Yeah. All right. We gotta dry everything, my friends. Dry, 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 dry. All right. Cthulhu's getting going. Got some Cthulhu, some little guy here. <laughs> Everyone. I'm just loving, just looking at him, just admiring, admiring Cthulhu and all his beauty. He's being, he's being done very well by mom. Oh, Ooh. glazing liquid dried faster than I thought it would. Yeah, it was a light application of it, so it was just a little bit better. All right, we're going to start with our number six round. And we're going to begin to shape our Cthulhu. So lots of different ways I can get him in here. I am going to start with a little bit of my Thalo Green and Burnt Sienna. And Cad Yellow. And Cad Yellow. If you need to gold it up, you just add more brown into it. So this is, it takes it into a more muted color. And come here to the top of that tentacle. I'm going to just shape that there. Just a loose little. I'm still leaving lots and lots and lots of the dark. 
Don't, don't abandon the dark. <laughs> You're so silly. Just bringing a little bit, you know, forward here. You know, we have to come in and sort of rough him up for sure. Maybe a little more highlighted green just so we can really see it. Yeah. Cthulhu. Sweeping up the little brow bone, giving it a little bit of a, you know, sensibility. Tapping that in. I'm going to tap these in because I want the little ridges to be rough just planning out where my ridges go so it's one two three four five and then I wiggle these forward So many bumps on his brain. You gotta give bumps on his brain. He's got bumps. Cause he's so smart. He's so smart. I, that would be technically true too. He's very smart. <laughs> he's not dumb. He's not dumb. He's not a fan of humanity. Or yeah. light. Or the world. It's okay. We all have hard days. <laughs> Millennia. Hang <laughs> on. <laughs> You can see as I'm painting, I can refine his face. So, like, even without the traceable, if I want to change something, that doesn't really stress me out. Right? That's why I wasn't too worried about having to use the, you know, a traceable right now to get him in. Now let's paint some of our tentacleness. Yeah. One thing I can do just to make it a little bit easier is I can go into my burnt sienna and deoxazine purple. And a little more burnt sienna and titanium white to create the under tentacle color. You can always add yellow into it to gray it even more. It's just a trip. So one way that I can deal with my tentacles is paint the part that I can see. Where it's twisting. See how by putting the pink pad on one side and flipping it, it twists the tentacle? That's a cool way that you can do that. You can twist your tentacles, my friend. Just pulling those around. I don't have to worry about it too much here. I've got the buildings and stuff, but sometimes it is nice to
So where you sink, see more pink, that's where it would have turned. Yeah. Now we come over here and catch some of them too. Little brown, little docks, purple, titanium white. And even though we're painting it back in, you can see as we start to do that, that that puts the mist we put in back back. Gives us those layers we're going to need layer, later. Sort of fun to find a little padding on that and get that going. Let's call that a step. Step. Step it up. It's very steppy. Very step. Now I'm going to put my little tidy brush to the side and I am going to grab a tiny round uh, hog bristle brush. See which ones my tiniest ones are. These are, this is pretty good. Grab one of these. Yay, you, you are a number four Raphael Artony brush. Now, see, when they come stiff and everything with the sizing in them, they're all neat and tidy, but like as you paint with them, they're going to get fluffier. They do that. Going to add a lot more of my yellow here and a lot more brown into that kind of little army green we got going there. We'll make little ridges. They're both at the same time almost a marking and a texture. Just smaller marks and following what I did before, I'm just refining it further. All the brain bumps. And your dimensional beings be like. This is how we do. So the when you when you create something that's from a book, there is a description, but there's also this sort of like your imagination, the author's imagination, the fan's imaginations that you're always sort of contending with. Will yellow light Hansa work the same as uh, lemon yellow Hansa? Yes. You'll be just perfect. Great question. Thank you for being here today, honey. Of course. All right, now I'm gonna. Dad is gonna... probably actually gonna hop in again. So... Is he gonna come back? He is gonna come back. I'm gonna kind of paint the top here of the tentacle, and he's picked up Luna, and he'll he's just finishing up. Got stuff to do. Businessman. Businessman. Business, 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 business. Business, 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 business. So we're just starting to find those little, it's you know, some of the colors, some of the. It's very cthulhu -y. It's very cthulhu -y. Come here and highlight his little bone. It's sort of a dry brush right here. Now I'm going to go a little more green 
in my mix. He looks kind of cute before you add all his shadows. Hmm? He looks kind of cute before you add all his shadows. But he is cute. You don't know. I... Okay. <laughs> You're right. Maybe he is cute. He's cute. He's cute. So I'm just sort of defining in some of the tentacles and getting them richer. A little less sketched out. They look green right now. Kind of coming in through here with a little of it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get a little phthalo green into my Mars black. Start to add some shadows between the faceplate and the tentacles coming out. Little black and green. Thank you so much, honey. It was such a joy to have you today. Just a little dark right here closer to his head so there's some shadow and everything going in. I'm liking that very, very much. Now I want to check my line on my water as I'm going. Just make sure that that is still set well. Because sometimes as I paint, it loses its set. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will do it from two different directions and just make sure it is on the square on that canvas and the way it needs to be. So that's just going to help me keep in mind where my line is. How are you doing, babe? Doing okay. Yeah. He's a weird one. Look, I get it. He's so strange. But he's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> let's give him a new step. Okay, let's see here. I got to see where you were at. You were on step seven. So this will be step eight, it seems. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my... Green and yellow a little bit, and I'll start getting into my zinc. Come here on the cheeks. He's very colorfully green. It's a way to explain it, I think. Adding some of the little more green markings through here. Tapping that in. Getting his little monster skin aglow. Looking pretty darn good. Getting some getting some lift going. Now I'm gonna get a detail brush while everything is having a bit of a rest. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little of my green and black on my detail brush. Just 
just sort of underline this area, which would be in shadow. Trying to make sure I can see the, from the different angles. The glare on the on on the side view makes it really hard to get the good color contrasts. Yeah, it can be really charged. I can say that it's much more glowing here, oh, John, than it is in real life. And if you came the, and looked at oh, it, oh, remember you're looking through a teleprompter which has tinted glass. Oh, well, that's right. Let me let me look over yeah, here. Yeah, I've been. That's what I've been looking at. Is your the? Oh, the, well, we're good yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I was trying to say earlier is that you've got tinted glass, which is going to mess everything up. Which so I'm going to take uh, a yeah, little yeah. bit of my orange from earlier, which was my cad red and my cad yellow. Tap in more towards there, starting to build up that glow. His little angry, angry glow. A little bit of cat red here, tapping it up and down. So it's a little different than the eyes that I normally paint because instead of being about you know specific eye structures, it's about the internal uh, uh, darkness and power <laughs> of this creature. So it just has different. It has a completely different ailing kind of goals. So like sometimes you might use something like what we know about like even robotics and stuff to create that look you know the way the way that sometimes ro robotic eyes look almost in you know inhuman and and foreign and alien and strange i'm going to continue to intensify his little his little thought there, and I haven't added a shadow or anything yet. Just a little purple and red on the outside edge, just exaggerating the Got a little bit of burnt sienna and cad yellow, phthalo green and white. I'm adding in a little more burnt sienna and cad yellow. Just kind of making a more muted color with a slightly lighter value. I can always come in with a little more brown and white. So there's lots of colors that you can get. I rolled that and I'm going to continue to like play with this. Just dancing that back up. Maybe a little more here from where the yellow was. We're trying to make very sort of And some of this vanishes with him because, like, as we add the next layer of mist, 
the miasma, the eldritch energy. It will get weirder and weirder and weirder. And come in and I'll mix a little bit of orange into my green. Just a little orange into the green. We've got it. We're doing it. It was cute. It was cute. You're doing so good, it sir. It is very cute. It was cute. Go ahead and get a little... Actually, no, I think I'm going to go into the zinc, actually. And lighten it with a little bit of... And come sort of on the ridges in a focal point. I don't know if that was your feedback or mine. I was wondering. I thought I heard weird mic feedback. I did too. I wonder if that's upstairs Honey playing with her guitar. That is what that is. Okay, that's probably what that is. Just adding a little bit of highlight to the little ridges. We just paint him with some thought. We're careful. We're thoughtful. We care about the result. And coming with a little bit of my glazing medium and my green and black. Oh no, I think it was the uh, early warning alarm system again. It's the alarm system, isn't it? Oh. I'm going to add a little bit of that glazing out on this right-hand side, kind of giving him a little shadow. So that's Mars black and phthalo green and a little bit of glaze. And you can see that that helps us <laughs> kind of think about how we've got a little form there. Just deepening those. And shading that back, kind of pushing that back so that we're getting a little bit of a... Now a little bit of the green and black here. But that's with glazing medium, right? So it's shading under there, but it's not... And a little bit of white. The front. Let's call that a step and dry everything. Dry. Do it. Good. Dry it all. All right. And yeah, just I've been getting back in in the seat back over here. So thank you everybody for joining us, and I will go back over and see if I missed any questions. Let me go. I have little things in the way, so I have to scroll them out. Yep. Yep. Patty. Pat got your question there about the 
So, yeah, we don't, um, I have to call today to find out about the soap order. Are you ready for the next step? Yes, we do have to call and find out about the soap order. We've been waiting on it. All right, so doxazine purple, burnt sienna, titanium white. I'm going to come in there and I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter version of that color. And then I'm going to come through and highlight some with my, still my number four. And you can see as I'm painting with it, it gets thicker, it gets fluffier, but that's what I want is that light fluffy. Again, okay, we got buildings here, so don't paint the best tentacles of your life where there's buildings. A little more purple, a little more brown. A little brown, a little purple, so it's in that same color, we're just not, you know, we're just letting it be kind of like a, a shading little moment. Come on that inside. A little bit of shading there. Rinse that out. Let that have a little bit of a thought, a little bit of a rest, a little bit of a, hmm, what's it going to be? And we've got all these fun little greens that we're going to get into that we've been mixing. And we're going to start making little patterns in it. Maybe get some just green green. And even if it come down to the mist, I can still work on, you know, designing or defining some of what I've got here. I think I'm going to keep that all in that one space. Instead of having that go off, I'll just make that more mist. I love the sound, the song you found for this one in your short. Yeah, that was just, I didn't know that was even out there, but for that short, and then I was like, this is just the best. And I love it so much. Just making little patterns and stipples and starting to get him to, you know, be a little interesting. Get a little more yellow into that mix there. Maybe a little burnt sienna. Okay, I've got some zinc. A little bit of zinc. I'm just making these little patterns here, little little dashes like you'd see on uh, reptile skin. Just making little dashes little model patterns so uh cindy was uh yeah cindy is asking uh do we do the darker shading around the whole eye or just the top uh dark shading under the lid and he around this outer edge so that it gets brighter as it comes towards that center then it's a highlight up here i've still got a lid i've got to paint down here but i wanted to get in you know more of my I before I did.
So what inspired your uh, color palette for this one with the purple and stuff? Mm. Eldritch. Oh, Probably yeah? all the years of D&D and Eldritch stuff, you know? Just like it's it's a sort of a color series that I would have been... It would have been probably harder to resist it as a color series. <laughs> Make like a pop art Cthulhu would have been harder. <laughs> I mean, now that I've said it and the thought of it, it's not. But just even thinking of it sometimes is. More challenging than you think. Mm. I'm going to put that to the side. And then I'm going to come in and get a little bit with my detail brush of my Mars black and my Thalo green. Number one brush. Light tracing there. Yeah, just a little light lining with the Mars black and the green. It should read is a very, very dark green. And it's just going to help me um, add some definition to the tentacles that we've got coming in and out of vision. So we just keep refining what we've got. Just clearing that up and crisping that up so they're defined as tentacles. They do look tentacly. That is their job. It is what they do. To reach out and give you give you anxiety hugs. Yes. For when you're feeling stressed. For when you're feeling calm. He brings <laughs> the anxiety. If you're ever feeling too calm, just call on Cthulhu. Hey there, Cthulhu. Happy to bring some anxiety into your life. I'm telling you what, me too. Just pulling those in. It's a weird amount of detail you need to have to make him work. Mm -hmm. But once he does, then he really, really do. Might even come into my under Cthulhu kind of color here. Make sure that that sort of twists a little bit. Back into my black and green. Just running two twisted lines right there. Letting them intersect by running that line into it and then bringing this line around to twist it, I can turn the tentacle that way as well. And again, there's buildings here, so I don't want to do the best tentacles of my life where I'm going to have buildings, but they, you know, as I uh, paint the buildings in with the artist knife, what I find is that different parts might peek out unpredictably. So just preparing for that by letting the tentacles be here I can circumvent having to awkwardly paint out or paint in a building well I think that almost everything is awkward with uh, a Cthulhu around I mean he is like that one guest you really didn't want to invite to the party <laughs> right so just defining tentacles is what we're doing here 
They are the defining tentacles of your mind. It should look like a crisping edge to the tentacle, not like you cartooned out the tentacle, right? It's just uh -huh. giving you that edging, that form that you need, especially when you're misting so much stuff. Uh -huh. And you will be misting so much stuff. Now let's so get much. another little... I'm going to go ahead and get some white into this green over here. And it's going to give me kind of a weird minty green. I can knock it back with a little bit of brown, but it's still kind of there. Maybe a little yellow in it. I've got to get it a value lighter than I've gone so far. There we go. You can really see that. But still green. <laughs> Little tiny marks using this little rough brush. If this brush makes you miserable, just switch brush. Just switch brush. If, you, if you've got to have a very tight toe to your brush to be able to stay inside the tentacles, then it's okay for you to switch. Just patterning this all over it. You guys have got this. Back into this green. Somebody this year for Christmas is going to get from some grandmother a Cthulhu. It's going to be the best. It's going to be the best because this kid's going to be like, I know my grandma. I know her. She doesn't know what I, I, I'm excited about. Doesn't read the books I read. Doesn't, you know. And then you're going to throw this down. They're going to be like, what? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I did not know. The husbands that play D&D. &D, uh -huh. Or wives. Or partners. Man. Just any person that would like it. Or eldritch spirit. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The dry brush this kind of maybe here. Oh, I like that. A little more green on there. Just shaping him out some. Giving him some some thoughtfulness. Shall we call it a step? I think so. I'm going to bring a little of my white over to my very light green yellow that I mixed from earlier. Which was cad, yellow, burnt sienna, phthalo green, and white. Just adding a lot more white to it. Are his weird little strange little lines back into the black and gray? I mean, black and green. And just come across his little eye like that with little so that makes a little bit of a patterning there. Yeah.
That's not terrible. Mm. I don't dislike that. No. Filbert Grainer. <laughs> Three eighths. Filbert Grainer. But Princeton. Getting it wet. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of black. And maybe brown together, and I'll get the glazing liquid in it so that it flows off my brush nicely. I'm going to come underneath these tentacles and add a bit of this sort of surface texture, roughness. Kind of a cross hatch makes it feel um, more like skin or something. Yeah, like little whatever textury bits that may be there. I'm not sure if he's got little suckers on there or if they're just pure snaky grip strength. Yeah, I hadn't decided, and then you know, I was like, well. We can add suckers, or we could go grippy strength, and I was like, we're all going to enjoy painting grippy strength much better. <laughs> it's just one interesting way to do that, right? To, to like, rough it up. Rough the surface. Now I'm going to put out a little fluid white up over by my tentacle color. It will be used elsewhere, but for mm -hmm. sure i got to have some tentacle color. I will go ahead and load my brush with a little bit of fluid medium. My glazing, li my, my uh, golden fluid acrylic titanium white. So it's the same pigment as this one, but the body of the paint is different. And it will work very well with my grainer. Isn't that wild how that roughs that up? Yeah, it does. Just adding textures. Yeah. Very, very much like it when he's all textured up. Oh. It gets super fun. Okay, dry everything. Dry everything push the baiting around all right <laughs> dry everything and then we'll come back for the next step okay yeah yep and yeah feel free to put your if you are uh, asking a question you can put it in caps it's not yelling uh so the moderators were staying there um so yeah feel free uh we uh check out the website we have a whole bunch of new stuff happening out there all sorts of new things in development that you guys should be seeing um, you can make sure you sign up for our newsletter, for the text messaging. All that is working out there. The There's some updates to our uh, calendar system happening, as well as e -com. So There's all sorts of neat things happening out there you can check out. We'll go and I, I want to say thank you to everyone who signed up for texts. Um, I don't, uh, right now we got this like really fun month where I can send images with the text. So I hope you guys are enjoying that. So if you, uh, it, you were wondering, did you migrate us over? Yes, we did. That was us. We were getting a, a better tech service. And then I'm just going to put another line in here just to make sure I know where it is. 
I'm going to need it in a minute. For sure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take tape. It's going to help me hold my line. This is artist hold tape. Hold the line. Hold the line. Anyways, um, yeah, we're super excited about the new texting. And so I'm able to send out images. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be able to send out offers or something. Mm -hmm. Just burnishing this down. Right, I'm going to just burnish it down. I can burnish it down with a artist knife if I need to. I'm going to be using it later. It's a Scotty knife. That just keeps the, uh, if I've wet paint from sneaking under the tape. Huh. That's all that does. All right, I'll put that aside till I need it later. And we're now going to be back into our round blender. I get a little bit of my lemon yellow. And uh, interestingly enough, maybe my Mars black. That also gives me an interesting glowing. And I'm going to have some different stuff here. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got lots of dimensionality mm -hmm. and go into my black and green. I don't mind. Wipe that out. Add a lot more yellow to it. Get some zinc into my brush. And we're going to just mist right on up over some tentacles, my friend. Someone loves you. Or they'd like my identity. <laughs> it's coming right up to the tape and just bring this up. Yes, I've got buildings here. So this is a good place to practice my mist. Like if I'm unsure is over where I'm going to have buildings. So you see, it leaves your tentacles showing through. You don't want to erase them with your paint. You, you're going to want them to show through. Still be a glowing. Maybe a little bit up over into this tentacle. You never know. Never. This way. Interestingly enough, I can then go into my cad yellow and my thalo green, which is so kind of intense and obnoxious. Uh -huh. Get a little of my zinc white into that as well. Really kind of go a little wild. Because where, where he's digging around, see, that's that would be uh, definitely we would see a, a example of. You Some know, eldritch magic coming. Yeah, up. happening here. He's a he's a, he's not just he's he's sifting, but he's sifting with purpose, my friend. He's got purpose in his sift. I'm gonna rinse out. Now sometimes I will take my brush slightly damp and soften things. Now that does that. So I will want to soften something just for the purpose of what I've got going on. We will call that that. Now, if you're ready, we're going to get our bright again. Is you ready for a step then? We're ready for a step. There's a step. Mm, actually, I might want to use a smaller angle brush. 
let's use a smaller angle brush. Let's use a, a little half inch Princeton catalyst angle. Go ahead, get this brush wet. Get some just black paint. I just bring a little rectangle at an angle. Maybe bring that over a little bit more. I think I might do the rest of this with palette knives, actually. Be more fun. Sometimes I'll be like, what do I want to use? I'm going to just brush this down here, though, so I've got good coverage. I will be coming back into it. I think I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to use my knife instead of the... I'm going to come here and load up my knife. I'm going to load on the left-hand side. And I'm going to make some vertical lines. Do that again. Load on the left-hand side. It's like, just imagine that this is just remnants of a city. just running this line it's just you can do a pen i just there's something about running paint on the the knife that just feels architectural I'll run that off and back to this there we go a little angle here A little kind of like distant <sighs> collapsing buildings is what we're really getting here. So this is like a little town that is being destroyed on either side, coming all apart. Now I can go ahead and pull my tape off theoretically. Yay! With a crisp line that now will help it look like a water's edge no matter what I do. Super crisp. Super crisp. Super duper crap. Super crap. Now I'm going to take my round brush. My round brush. I'm going to come here. I'm going to do the weirdest thing. I'm going to load it up. And I'm going to make a little peak. And it comes up. We're making the little shadows of, of ripples. So this is a little different than what I normally do, which is just, you know, the little light coming down. If I need a, a little bit of glazy medium to improve flow, I use it. Oh, wow. I really like how those little rocks just sort of... Well, they're like little, they're like a little, little wave. wavers or whatever. Yeah. yeah, when the lights on them, you'll be able to tell what it is. They need to have some big ones and some small ones. I but sometimes up here, if you're saying that the water is a rippling, you've got to have shadow. The emergence of them. Yeah. Any ones you don't like, you can always paint out. So just feel like, oh, I'm I'm okay here. I can paint it out if I need to. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red, cad yellow. Come right across. Now 
and start painting in the highlights. I will feather it out here and I'm allowing little ripples to show where there's going to be like little moments. So it's just a different way of capturing that look. I really like those the accents on those waves. That's super cool. Is this a... Uh... Amy would like to know if this is Kevin's cousin. Well, Kevin and Cthulhu are absolutely related, but right now they're no contact because recently Cthulhu's become very radicalized. <laughs> I can see. He, he believes that 5G is piercing the veil <laughs> and uh, sending little attack bots. We all seem to have one of those. Everybody's got one in every family. <laughs> so they're not really talking, but, you know, uh, Kevin hopes that uh, it will get better. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Bree, if you want to sign up for text, just go to our website. There should be a little pop-up window that comes up that asks you to type in your email and password. Um, if you don't see that, you can go to the store and you should see it pop up there if it doesn't. Um, if for whatever reason, neither of those work, uh, email us support at theartsherpa.com and we'll verify manually that you're entered. But you should be, it, if, if you don't see a pop up in either of those places, then it's because you probably already filled it out yeah. and it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to pester you. Exactly. So. Exactly. This is Kevin's cousin. All right, now I'm going to take a little uh, quarter inch angle. Is you this can use your step now. We new step in. Let's okay. give it a new step. All right, it's the thirteenth step. Yeah, because I got to you know do this here. So I'm going to take this and I'm just using it because it's going to give me a way to do little windows. And just let that dry for a little while. If this is dry, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and get a little bit of my sink and some of my watercolor here. Maybe more of that color. Better blend. Just make another little layer. Starts to talk about the idea that And I'll bring a little bit of it in front of these buildings. Little glazy medium. It's going well. Kind of creating that sense of the city's getting it too. <laughs> Everybody's having a moment now. I'm going to rinse that off. You know, maybe a little bit more of it just in pure color. Just kind of pulling some brighter versions of this through here. And grab my little little glaze here. Little black. 
and zinc. And then I'm going to get some more black. Just about working it back and forth a little bit, you know? Yeah. This isn't one of those pieces that in any way has to be, like, perfect. That's definitely, definitely not it. This is just a really fun little... Yeah. It's a Cthulhu. It's Cthulhu. And we just enjoy Cthulhu where yeah. we can. Just bringing little lines through there, showing the kind of... Too much white. So I'll just go back with my other color here and and again, if I get too much white too, in any other way, I can come through and just bring up that water. Isn't that wild how that starts to make the little water? Yeah. All right, let's dry everything. Dry, 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 dry. Dry, 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 dry. Dry, 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 dry. Even though he's not dry, he is very, 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 very scary and big and... This is pretty cool. I like the little monster. This is a good one to put up on the wall. And this is really great for, like, anybody who likes the role-playing game kind of stuff in your life. It's a great, fun gift. If you're looking for that kind of stuff. Ooh -hoo. Let's. Step it. Step it. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow. More cad yellow. And come here and. Give those windows a bit of a glow, right? And come back with a little bit of black. You can for sure, you know, tighten that up. I'm going to wiggle some little ripples through here, as you would have them. That's pretty, pretty awesome as they go. A little bit of my cad yellow and cad red together. I just continue to like sort of push the color. If I need to blend it with my blender, I will. It needs that. Just picked up a little bit more of it. I'm just going to blend that out there so it's just a little more. Woo! Just 
just have a little fun painting the color in on the water. Be happy with what we have. Now I'm going to get my detail brush and if you'll remember I had some fluid paint. And then I also have this black here. I'm going to load up the black first. Kind of quickly draw on some window planes on some of these windows, right? And some of the windows will be brighter because they'll have like more light on them so I can sprinkle in a little little extra light. And I can come here and say, all right, you got a little reflection on, the, you know, this tentacle, maybe a little on that tentacle. A little bit of reflection in the inner eye. It's looking for your inner eye. It's looking for some. <laughs> Just sort of dot up in here. It's sort of like uh, maybe there's bright light that's reflecting. Showing some of the just coming out of the water wet. So I like to make sure that I've got that. And for some of the tentacles, I don't like that, how that worked out at all. So that was just, I was just too heavy with my hand. If you can get it up quickly enough, you don't have to worry about uh, painting over it. That is just a wet brush with water. That's how I fix a mistake and just erase it. Just a little bit of a, you know, a little reflection line. Perhaps there's one kind of up over the eye. Might actually add some right there too, just to pump it up. Just little highlights where you need them. And this shouldn't be too intense. Add a little bit there. And then I can always come through and Smooth it out, just make sure it's, you know, got the feeling of the water, but it's okay that it's weird and unusual and strange and a uh, glowing. Let us go ahead and it's very strange. give this a scary little signature over here. Oh, yeah? So I so hope if you guys are giving this to some gamer in your life or person in your life that... You wouldn't normally, maybe you're like a person that's always been flowers and you did this for them and they loved it. Please tell me about that. I, every once in a while, try to do these 
I've got th- there's uh D and D tentacles and dice mm-hmm. in water hyper realistic three hoot. I've got the beholder, which uh, everybody gave one year. I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> and now we have uh, Cthulhu coming up out of the the danger zone. The danger zone. Highway. Highway two. There we go. Just a little signature there. Okay, my goodness. That turned out so nice. This is just a weird, funny, silly one. Um, It was good. I enjoyed watching this one come together. When you love it, you love it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I loved it with the song. It was like one of my very good friends who's a director and voice actor and actor actually did a TikTok um, blend with it (laughs) that just made my whole day. And I really, really, really loved it. It was just a lot of fun for me. So I, I very much thank you for allow. I don't normally do really scary ones, but thank you for allowing me this one this year and participating with me and and taking part of that. I think he's a hoot and a half. Uh, can't wait to see yours next time Thursday. We've got a mushroom. I also just if you guys could do me the solid of going and watching the short that I just did of the ghost coffee. It's just a one minute. It's cute. Um, that'll help that video do well. And then uh, I've got Thursday, we've got the mushroom. Yeah. And then Saturday, we have the the intense uh, inspired by bald joint, bald, bald joint dolls. The mm. fox creature. The It's a fox bat. Um, <laughs> I can't afford a bald joint doll right now at the moment. So I paint it. Anyways, um, so that is going to be gorgeous and wonderful. And then uh, we have the beautiful... Uh, I don't remember. I think they're called a, a blue tit. Huh. The little birdies? <laughs> yeah, they're yellow and blue under a raining fall leaf. And then we have a fall forest that you guys voted on. And then a deer. So lots of good stuff coming. And I'm painting sick day videos. And I just did a really hysterical bee. You're going to see lots of creatures and fantasy and stuff like that. Really fun stuff. Stuff that might um, also sync well to a slightly younger audience if you're doing gifting. Uh, so I think you guys will like that. It's going to be a lot of good stuff. More fall, more autumn, more fall, more autumn. And then we're going to be right on into winter wonder. So yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. A little cold, but I'm excited. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today. I thought he was a lot of fun. I enjoyed sharing him with you. Um, so I sh- uh, And I can't wait to see yours. That's really yeah. all I can say. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I'll see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.